The Chiefs are boring now, but why? Stop being boring! Don't let this play fool you, either. For a long time, throws like this one made to Xavier Worthy in week four were the hallmark of the Kansas City Chiefs. Blazing speed on the outside combined with the impossible arm strength of Patrick Mahomes. That play wouldn't even crack the top 10 of best plays from 2018 Kansas City. For the first five years of the Mahomes era, these kind of plays were routine. Every game, an exhilarating showcase of offensive brilliance. Now they're an anomaly. That throw was actually the longest in terms of air yards of Mahomes' career. Worthy's TD was just one of two that the Chiefs needed to scrape by the Chargers, and it felt like a throwback to a bygone era of Chiefs football. It also serves as a reminder of one shocking yet increasingly undeniable truth. The Chiefs' offense has gotten boring. That's the longest touchdown pass for Mahomes in a long time. And for a self-confessed Chiefs hater, the one thing they always had, the one thing I couldn't take away from them, was they were exciting. The thing that always annoyed me about Tom Brady was he was boring. And now Mahomes is turning into boring. I am a Broncos fan, so obviously <laughs> I want the Chiefs to actually become boring losers, but they're still winning. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters, right? Even in the peak of my Kansas City disdain, I still had to admit that their offense was electrifying, like a kill room in a 1940s prison. But how did we get here? How did the most dynamic offense in the NFL evolve into something so pedestrian? I'm going to break down how the high-flying Mahomes show became a stagnating attack. Uh, the defensive adjustments that caused it, why the stats back this up, and yet, why the Chiefs are still winning, despite all of that. We're going balls deep into the Chiefs offense. Do a sub. And just know today's episode is sponsored by manscaped.com slash good sports and their brand new full-fledged face and neck shaver, the Chairman Pro. This bad boy is elite as it features a 360 degree contouring head like that girl from The Exorcist. <laughs> Great reference for the month of Halloween, eh guys? Eh? The Chairman Pro is not possessed by the devil though. That is guaranteed. It does possess two skin safe four foil blades. Shaving your neck sucks. So Manscaped designed a shaver to get you a super close shave and a stubble trimmer for when you want to keep that rugged look. Both blade options are designed to reduce razor burn and irritation. And like a good offensive coordinator, the blades pivot and flex to adjust to the contours of your face and neck. Plus it's waterproof, so you can shave that neck in the shower. So if you're looking to elevate your grooming routine, the Chairman Pro is the ultimate tool for the job. With its advanced features and Manscaped's trusted quality, you're going to love the way you look and feel. So just use my link below, manscaped.com slash good sports for 20% off your order and free shipping. The transformation of the Chiefs offense begins with the very reason they became electrifying in the first place, Patty Mahomes. After years of solid but unspectacular play under Alex Smith, Kansas City made a bold move in 20-18 by trading Smith to hell and handing the reins to Mahomes. The man they of course traded up for at the 10th overall pick in the 2017 draft. The result was immediate and breathtaking. Mahomes tied Tom Brady's touchdown record in 2007 by throwing 50 touchdown passes in his first season as a starter, averaging 8.8 .8 yards per attempt. And the Chiefs offense exploded for a league best 35.3 points per game. Not only do I believe we won't see another QB throw for 50 touchdowns in their first season starting, I'm starting to think it might be a long time before we see any quarterback hit 50. Now in the AFC Championship thriller against the Patriots, Mahomes gunslinging almost got them to the Super Bowl, but the promise was undeniable. They were young, they were fun, and they were full of optimism. What'd you think I was gonna say? <laughs> they had taken Tom Brady and the Pats to the brink of extinction in 2018. 
The Pats still won the Super Bowl in the dullest form imaginable, foreshadowing, but NFL fans were left pining for what they had seen in Missouri. Once home to the greatest show on turf in 1999, these Chiefs were the second iteration of that kind of high-flying action a couple decades later. Speaking of the Rams, during that 2018 season, Mahomes and Jared Goff went back and forth in a 51-54 shootout that is widely considered one of the greatest primetime games ever. Between 2019 and 2021, though, Mahomes continued to be the NFL's golden boy, throwing 101 touchdowns to just 24 interceptions and maintaining an elite yards per attempt near eight. In this stretch, the Chiefs won Super Bowl 54 and made a second appearance the following year, cementing Mahomes' status as the league's most exciting player. But after two straight postseason disappointments, including a gut-wrenching loss to the Bengals in the 2021 AFC Championship game, the Chiefs faced a critical decision, and a move that would fundamentally reshape their offense and give them the tools to build their defense, they traded receiver Tyree Kill, their most dangerous dangerous weapon to the Miami Dolphins in 2022. Suddenly, the blistering speed that had once defined the Chiefs was gone, replaced by a committee of wide receivers, Kadarius Toney, Juju Smith-Schuster, Sky Moore, and Mecole Hardman, none of whom could replicate Hill's game-breaking abilities. Whatever you think about those guys, they are not doing shit like this. Not now, not ever. And yet, even without Hill, Mahomes won his second MVP and led the Chiefs to another Super Bowl victory in 2022. In fact, Mahomes threw four more touchdowns and for 400 more yards in 2022. That's like replacing a Ferrari with whatever car Rasheed Rice is driving and still finishing the race in one piece. As one ring became two, the cracks were beginning to show. As Mahomes was terrorizing defenses from 2018 to 2021, a quiet revolution was taking place on the other side of the ball. Meatball. One of the first architects of this revolution was Vic Fangio, uh, then head coach of the Denver Broncos, who leaned heavily into a defensive scheme designed to slow down Mahomes specifically. It was cover two. This zone defense, which deploys two safeties deep to prevent long bombs, force Mahomes to check the ball down or find shorter, less explosive plays. We've heard analysts talk about the cover two defense ad nauseum, and it was clearly a reaction to offenses like the one in Kansas City, but it goes deeper than just that coverage. In 2021, Mahomes still thrived against the Blitz, posting 119 passer rating when defenses sent extra rushers. But defenses quickly learned that blitzing Mahomes was a fool's errand. By 2023, Mahomes was blitzed just 14.4% of the time, by far the lowest rate of any QB in the past six years. Instead of sending pressure, teams sat back in cover two, took away the deep threats, and dared, I say, dared the Chiefs to dink and dunk their way down the field. The result? Fewer big plays. Mahomes' average depth of target dropped from 9.1 yards in 2018 to just 6.5 yards in 2023. His production through the air dropped by roughly 1,100 yards and 14 TDs from 2022 to 23. With the same and results! A Super Bowl ring. It was like he took his Superman costume off, only to reveal underneath he was the Punisher. This trend wasn't just isolated to Mahomes, though. Across the league, post-snap defensive rotations increased, with teams disguising their coverages to create confusion. Defenses became more complex, and Mahomes, like many quarterbacks, began to settle for safer, shorter throws. His once daring, improvisational style gave way to more conservative, methodical play. It's like if Major League Baseball uh, kept moving the fences back so far back that eventually the most efficient thing to do at every bat is just bunt. Doesn't exactly tickle the fancy of the average viewer uh, watching at home, but it's the reaction to the reaction that got us here. Even so, Mahomes managed to grind through the 2023 season, leading the Chiefs to another Super Bowl win. His third, despite having one of his worst statistical years, including just 10 regular season wins and an average of 226 passing yards per game. Now, it won't show up on paper, but it's probably his masterpiece. His ninth symphony his Sistine Chapel, his Pete Davidson 2018 to 2022 run of girlfriends. Wait, 
Is their success connected? Hey, Pete. Oh, hey, Taylor. No, 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 no. Now, the narrative emerged that Mahomes had matured, learning to win without the gaudy numbers. They also had built the reputation as a more centered, more cohesive, and tougher team in the post-Tyreek Hill era. The defense was catching up to the offense, and the addition of seventh-round pick Isaiah Pacheco and his crazy seizure legs had offset the swing and miss that was the 2020 first-round selection of Clyde edwards -Alah. The Chiefs had new dimensions to their team and they were using them effectively. Three rings now, but the greatest show on turf they were not, at least not any longer. If 2023 was a warning sign, 2024 has been the full realization of this new Chiefs offense. Efficient, perhaps, but far from the thrilling unit it once was. Through four games, Mahomes has thrown just six touchdowns against five picks, with his average depth of target plummeting further to 5.6 yards per attempt. His top weapons have either underperformed or been sidelined by injury. Travis Kelsey, the mustachioed linchpin of Mahomes' short game, is 35 years old and has just 158 receiving yards and no TDs through those four games. Rasheed Rice, the promising young receiver who was crucial to their short passing attack in 2023, injured his knee week four. The Chiefs prize free agent signing Holly Hollywood Brown out for the entire regular season with a shoulder injury. Hell, they've even been forced to dig up the corpse of Kareem Hunt. I wanted them so bad. I know, bro. Who once upon a time was a key member of that insane 2018 offense before we all saw a video of him combining the philosophy of Harrison Butker with the real life occupation of Harrison Butker. It's a joke. Chill the fuck out, guys. Without Hill's blazing speed or Kelsey's prime, the Chiefs offense feels stripped down, relying on the occasional flash of Mahomes' brilliance, like the Xavier-worthy touchdown to provide life. And those moments have become too few and far between. Worthy is dazzling, but so far it's yet to be seen if he can be a staple of the offense. Mahomes has only thrown his way 15 times. We'll see if that changes with the absence of Rice, one major key to the past success has been their good health in Kansas City, right? They remained one of the healthiest teams in the league in each of their Super Bowl winning seasons. That might be changing. For all of the talk of the Chiefs offense being boring, here's the catch. They're still winning football games. The Chiefs are atop the AFC West, uh, the AFC altogether, even with the modest point differential of just plus 20, and an offense that ranks middle of the pack in scoring. Why? It's their defense. They have shifted their entire identity more seamlessly than I have ever seen any team do. After trading Hill, Kansas City used the financial flexibility to pay defensive stalwart Chris Jones, and they've built the formidable unit. In 2023, the defense allowed the second fewest points in the league, and they're carrying that momentum into 20-24, holding opponents to just 18 points per game. Good for seventh best right now. Players like Trent McDuffie, George Karloftis, and Nick Bolton have emerged as key contributors, and the defense has become the backbone of the Chiefs' success. And when they weren't adding defenders through the draft, they were using their picks and cap space to build the offensive line. A clear reaction to the atrocities that Tampa put them through in Super Bowl 55. Now they've retooled their offensive line multiple times, but that trend might also be catching up to them because for the first time since say the early Alex Smith era, they are middle of the road, both in pass protection and run blocking. I watched Baldy break down a lot of Mahomes' missed throws against the Chargers and losing battles up front forced most of his misses or throwaways. Here's one positive sign for Chiefs fans. Patrick Mahomes is four of seven with three touchdowns on throw of 20 plus yards this season. He's on a current pace that's significantly better than last season for efficiency on those deep passes. Of course, one of those deep balls came with a knee injury and uh, they don't track those in the stat sheet. But last season, he had just one touchdown and eight picks on those long throws and of course, a, a handful of untimely drops. It's no accident though that the Chiefs are grinding out wins the way they are. They're playing complimentary football. One hand washes the other, and God knows they've got blood on both of their hands. The sustained drives on offense help the defense, and Andy Reid knows there's more than one way to win an NFL game. 
paying the officials is the third way. Maybe at one point they could win a shootout if they found themselves in one, but now since the league has shifted towards defense, it's time to take the air out of the ball and put those fans to sleep. Bore us to death, Kansas City. My one hope was that as Mahomes aged, his crazy athleticism would diminish and he'd start losing games. I was praying to God he was the next Russell Wilson, but he's already proven he can win, running two very different offensive attacks. When the Chiefs needed to control the ball in the 2023 AFC Championship game against the Ravens, Mahomes managed the fuck out of that game, doing it to perfection, letting the defense carry them to victory. Mahomes is content to play boring football. He's a guy that has every right to have a crazy ego, and to his credit, he doesn't seem like he does. He's a fairly humble guy, except for when he freaked out during that Bills game in 2023. Given what he's got going on in that family of his, it seems like all of the normalness in the Mahomes bloodline went to Patrick, so good for him. I think the pairing of him and Andy Reid is already in the Belichick-Brady tier. When I compliment Mahomes' ability to change his game, I want to point to Tom Brady's final two years in Tampa. After he ousted Bruce Arians, Brady got to call the shots on offense, right? And he threw the ball 719 and 733 times, and his team suffered because of it. Those are 100 more throws than any of his career highs. So Mahomes shifting his offensive philosophy is actually quite impressive, and it makes me want to puke. Now, there's some other factors at play here. Uh, they're tougher to quantify. I think the best way to put it now, beyond the stat sheet, is Chiefs fatigue. They've been mainstays on national television, on commercials, and in popular culture for over a half a decade. On the field, Kansas City has played 18 postseason games in the last six seasons. Essentially, Chiefs fans have gotten to watch their team play a season more of football than me as a Broncos fan who hasn't tasted postseason success at all since 2015. It also doesn't help that the announcers turn every move Patrick Mahomes makes into an act of great heroism. It's a heck of a play by Mahomes, all those extra workouts he does. God knows that we can only take so many involuntary sounds of primal lust from the mouths of Chris Collinsworth and Tony Romo before we mute that television. At some point, it's time to act like professionals, guys, and not schoolgirls fawning for the bad boy. At least Tony Romo likes his schoolgirls aged roughly 77 years. She was wearing the Cowboys cheerleading outfit. Yeah. You saw that coming, didn't I, you? You I said, had... I think she's going to go with a little cheerleading outfit tonight. And I was like, wow, that's pretty good. What do you think we're going to see? I mean, she looks half? amazing, right? You know? My point, the Chiefs might be as tired as we are of hearing about them. Now, it goes, to, it goes without saying, but the Travis Kelsey-Taylor Swift relationship has transcended sports. It's one of the most famous and richest people to ever live and some guy who has 15 catches and no touchdowns through four games. Really compelling stuff as we enter year two of this storybook romance. Maybe we'll see Rishi Rice's mom stealing stuff off of Taylor Swift's porch soon. Eventually, the pendulum may or may not swing back to the Chiefs being an explosive offense. We can feel pretty confident that Mahomes will outlast Travis Kelsey and even Andy Reid in Kansas City. But it's hard to say what the Chiefs would look like with guys like, I don't know, Noah Gray and Matt Nagy assuming the roles of those Hall of Famers. Mahomes certainly still has all of the tools, and if they can find a true number one receiver, perhaps through a mid-season trade, there's hope for a resurgence, even this year. But for now, Chiefs fans might have to accept that the thrilling, high-flying Chiefs offense of old is no more. And yet, somehow, that might just be okay. The Chiefs are making the playoffs, right? And whatever team they suck into their tractor beam will be forced to play bully ball against them. It doesn't matter who they face up in Arrowhead, it will be horrifically ugly. And if history has taught us anything, the Chiefs will emerge victorious, covered in mud and bruises, with nothing sticking to them. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm the only person who can talk about my enemy with fairness. God, I'm so fair and balanced. How messed up is sports media that you gotta come to me for a fair take on God's taint of a football team?